Well, while I'm out here in the hallway, I'm pretty sure we can easily talk about something. Now, you've already heard the whole thing of, let's just say, video games normalizing violence and, well, just general disrespect against women. Let me see if you ever heard this one before. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet there it is. By this very logic, you're saying that by playing a video game instantaneously makes it so that I buy into an ideology. No. It's just a outfit. I'll get that later. It's just an outfit. It's just your character skin in the multiplayer game. But then again, we'll get to that later. And it's treated no differently than playing a British soldier. Because, again, you're talking about the multiplayer. If you're wanting to talk about the campaign, then you'll have a leg to stand on. This is bad on so many levels. No one should ever have a random chance of fighting for the Nazis. And we should never express that there's no meaningful difference between Nazis and Allied soldiers. For the third time, the campaign exists. You're talking about the multiplayer option, which... Honestly, if you're talking about Team Deathmatch, Domination, Sabotage, or anything like that, you can easily say there are other games. You can easily even play Halo for all I care. I'll get that. Um, yeah, the campaign puts those characters into context, however. Or that they're functionally interchangeable. And before anyone equivocates and says not all German soldiers in World War II were Nazis, if they were wearing the swastika and are functioning as an arm of the Nazi government... Germany was not the only country in in World War II. It was not even the only negative side against that the Allies had to fight against in World War II. Look at that. Um, you can also say there was Japan. Yes, kamikaze existed. Unless the game goes out of its way to tell you specifically that your particular character is not a Nazi, then they're a Nazi. There is also nationality. Are you acting as though only Germany could have been in World War II? In that multiplayer shooter, when it switched you to the German side, did it go out of its way to tell you that the person you're playing was pressed into service under threat of their life? Another thing I'm pretty sure you can easily think. You can easily think that the Nazis themselves were... It's an, the Nazi idea for Nazis is it's an ideology... Having to do with white supremacy, you can easily say. <laughs> you, some people misconstrue this as some kind of thing that you can easily use just to keep someone quiet. Yeah, that's a big old note. Oh, and on a similar note, let's please stop forcing people to play as terrorists as well. There you are. Are you talking about, oh, so you're bringing modern life into this now? Okay, so, yeah, this one would be a bit weirder. It's gonna be people that use, oh, let me think, brutality and violence, threat of death, or even death itself, to push a political agenda. I'll get that. ...are playing your modern shooter, and all of a sudden you're a terrorist. You didn't ask for this, you didn't choose this, and yet, second verse, same as the first, there it is. I mean, that's literally the name of your side in the game. So, what do you want us to do? Have it literally red versus blue? Oh, wait a minute, I shouldn't bring that up. That comes later. We can do better than this. Even if you put aside all of the people who have had traumatic experiences with these groups, who have lost loved ones to terrorists, or who have had generations of their families wiped out by Nazis, no one should have to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. Naturally. You can easily say, I don't have to worry about wearing the turbans or whatever would be Antifa's getup in the video games then. So, yeah. And by making people do so, we get them to stop thinking about it. To stop thinking of the meaning behind these things. You're still talking about multiplayer. You do know that. There is the campaign. We normalize them. We make them just window dressing for entertainment. Say that again, please? We make them just window dressing for entertainment. A little slower, please. We make them just... 
Okay, by this very logic, you might as well not play anything having to do with two sides going against each other, because you're normalizing that, and it just becomes just a thing that you can easily fight your friends with, just because, for the fun of it, on a Friday evening. Those uniforms, those symbols, become things that no longer inherently revolt us. You can't be inherently revolted by little symbols or signets, hints or phrases. You have to be taught to be revolted by these things. They reduce our visceral reaction to seeing the embodiment of these ideologies. Now, does this make us totally ignore the history that comes with them? No. Then why would you try to say that we shouldn't make it so that you shouldn't do anything having to do with the symbols. The symbols existed at that point in time. You have to at least try and figure out something you can use as a stand-in. The Iron Cross is one of them. Wait, you're going to bring that up soon enough anyway. But for some people, it moves them from the territory of revolting to just edging. It makes strolling a swastika on something change from unthinkable to just dangerous. And now you've gone to the part where you're talking about not the children, but the easily impressionable. As in to say, the normal people that see something and want to try it out for themselves. Okay... It means you might not take iron crosses all over a website as a warning sign that you should immediately leave. And if you don't leave, you might start reading and buying into hateful ideas there. Key word here, might start buying into them. I'm pretty sure there are some people that are just smarter than that and can easily do some critical thinking and easily try to do what they can to dispute that. It seems like such a small and simple thing, but it's things like this that erode our safeguards against dangers we sacrifice so much to fight. By the time you've played a hundred hours of being a Nazi, their voice stabs become memes and in-jokes with your friends. By the thousandth time you respond as a terrorist, you're either celebrating them or making fun of them. More likely of the two making fun of them because of how they sound so extremely, well, extremist, which, let's see if you can easily keep constantly saying, let me think, what is that one phrase? Oh, let me think, Allah Akbar, without even knowing his full context. Neither of which helps the global crisis we have that takes thousands of lives every year. And video games are supposed to help us stop the mass murder because of what? So what do we do? That's easy. Don't make them morally equivalent. <sighs> the campaign, I've already said this who knows how many times, you're just gonna have to, if I hear the, anything I have to do with that again, I'm just gonna have to put up a sign that literally says, the campaign exists. Don't make there be no in-game moral difference between your Nazis and your allies, between your terrorists and your counter-terrorist squads. Frame PvP as a training exercise, or simply take one of your non-odious sides and recolor them so that it's red versus blue. If you want red versus blue, I have a perfect example right here, Team Fortress 2. They're all mercenaries, they're all completely and totally international, and you don't have to worry too much about the whole thing of Nazis versus Allies. Have a good look at this one. Rather than Axis versus Allies. A good example of a game that does this is Rainbow Six Siege. Oh my word, you were so close. And then you had to go and lose it all. Sorry, better next next time. All of your bomb diffusion and hostage rescue multiplayer with no normalizing terrorists. In fact, by having all of the characters as counter-terrorists training for a possible threat, it highlights how real and present of a threat that is. Okay, so... Wait. Half the players play as the people that are supposed to be playing as the counter-terrorists that are supposed to be acting like the terrorists, and half the counter-terrorists acting like the actual counter-terrorists. Okay, this is getting confusing. This is making my brain hurt. I'm sorry. And if you decide that you need to have both sides be playable, don't make them interchangeable. Don't have players randomly spawn in as one or the other. Allow players to choose which side they're on. <clears throat> the only one you can easily say that this chooses in for would actually be free for all. Which, yes, does exist where you'd be either all the people are one or the other, 
but they're all against all. Team Deathmatch it is, you can choose one side or the other, but it has to somewhat be balanced. Now of course this has all sorts of in-game problems, such as creating shorter wait times for fascists, but you know what? Those wait times could be artificially extended, if it meant players had an active choice in what teams they would represent. Oh, you mean the online play. No, 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 no. That's gonna have to be a thing, and you're just punishing the people that choose the good side, quote-unquote. Because they have to wait for the people on the other side so they can have an opponent in the first place. If you're saying we need people playing Nazis in our games, and if you're going to say, but we need it for historical reasons, then your game better actually be historical. You can't really just hide behind the fact you called your desert map El Alamein. <sighs> Campaign. How many times did I already say that? And say, but it's historical. If that were the case, you need your PvP to at least represent real historical events. By that logic, I might as well just go to a historical reenactment play. And be a realistic take on those battles. Once you make both sides balanced, it's also no longer historical. And you can't really say that you need Nazis anymore for historical accuracy. Oh, and once you let players get cool weapons that weren't actually at that particular battleground, it's also no longer historically accurate. Wait. Are you going against the idea that you can easily choose the idea between what classes you can easily pick and the weapons within those classes? <sighs> Do I need to pull the medic out for you again? And you can't declare that your game will suffer if you don't put players in the jackboots of the Third Reich. And once your map is something carefully designed to have good gameplay by a team in a room in San Francisco or LA, and it's not a faithful reconstruction of the actual places the historical events occurred in, you can no longer say we need to have players take up arms in service of terror or hate. <sighs> Who bought the game? Who walked into the store, picked up the case for the game, walked it over to the counter, pulled out their wallet, pulled out the money to pay for such game, walked it over to their car, got in the car, got to their house, and put it in the console. Hmm? And look, we're not saying we can't have games about World War II or about terrorism. No, but you're saying either those symbols have to mean something, one, two, it has to be historically accurate to a T, or three, it shouldn't be done. We're not even saying we shouldn't make games where you play as a Nazi or a terrorist. But what we are saying is that the fact that you're playing as a Nazi or a terrorist in a game has to mean something. And it can't just be a skin. The skin usually would denote which team you're on. The problem is, is you can easily say in Black Ops you're either the Spetsnaz or the SOS, whatever that's supposed to stand for. It can't be something that a game randomly drops you into. The only mode it does that in is free for all. And really, if we are saying anything in this episode, it's this. Games can do better. We can agree on this little point, but in different ways. You can easily, you're saying that games can easily be more socially conscientious. We can easily say that games can improve and be complete among installment or um, release, I mean. No more microtransactions, please. I want to pay for the entire game up front. And in this particular case, it's not even that hard to do better. And it's no more costly to do better. All it requires is that we in the game industry be cognizant of the world around us. Oh my word, how many people say this? Um, let me think. Um, what is even the phrase? Get woke, go broke. To easily say that I want a socially conscientious game is I want a game that can easily comment on the world around me as a whole. And I mean comment on everything. And what these symbols we're drawing on mean that we think as we're building, not just about the game we're working on, but about the world as a whole. Would make sense, as in to say you're saying, what is the point of the game in the first place? What are we questioning? And how am I talking about the message in the game? If we can do that, we can take a big step forward for the industry. We can stop helping to normalize Nazis. <sighs> the major problem is I don't think they were normalized in the first place. Yeah, you get that idea.